Hi and marhaba. I am Dr. Ghassoub Sharif, a professor of history and a passionate lover of history. I want to tell you the story of the Middle East. Have you ever heard of the Middle East? It's a very long story and I cannot tell it in five minutes or five hours. But I have developed for you a YouTube channel that I call The Story of the Middle East. The Story of the Middle East. If you open this channel, you will find episode or call them stories of 7 to 12 minutes each. In these videos, I talk like a storyteller. I'm not teaching or lecturing. You're not going to take an exam. I'm entertaining you and providing you with useful knowledge. But the question is, but why should you bother to listen to stories about the Middle East or bother listen to history at all? The answer is coming in the coming slides. Let's carry on. Take my college students as an example. Whenever I started the history course, my students in the beginning said, we hate history. But my story style fascinated them and they loved history. I changed them from haters to lovers. Then after the course, after listening to my stories, they said, oh, history is a door which I have never thought to open. Now I feel ashamed of myself, but at least now I, I love history. Sometimes with my students, with other people, we discuss why students hated history at school. Because school teaches history as a subject and they give textbook and they focus on the battles, dates, and they make students study for the exam and they have to do a lot of memorization. Student is the, the, it's so boring. The students get a negative, develop a negative attitude and the information after the exam, it vanishes, disappears. So unfortunately, schools make history a victim. I blame them for making students hate history. I mean, not all schools. My philosophy is, if you don't know history, you don't know enough. It's like a leaf, is like a leaf that doesn't know it's, for example, this leaf doesn't know it's part of this tree. And you, when you stay away from stories, from history, you don't know where you belong. So, what is history? What is history? The question is, I can answer the question like a child. For a child, history is an exciting time because it's a story. Children love stories. You all love stories. But a deeper definition is, to know history is to know what people did in the past and why they did that. It's, in other words, it's to know what in their hearts, not just date, Let's look at the word story. Let's look at the word story, for example. If we drop the H, if we drop the I, what happens? What happens? We finally end in story. So history is a story. Isn't that fascinating? Right. So, but why human prefer stories? Of course you prefer stories. I challenge you, everybody prefers stories. Why? Because according to psychologists, they are privileged in the mind, easy to understand, they are interesting and very powerful, easy to remember, they are meaningful and they hook the attention. And above all, they are saved in memory. I mean, when you hear a story, your brain begins to push other information out because you need a space for, for the story. Here is a proof from history why stories are powerful. Let me ask you the question first. Have you heard of Shahrazad of the 14th century, like 800 years ago? Have you heard of Shahrayar the king? She proved that, she proved that stories make miracles. When she started telling stories to the king, what was he doing? Do you know? If you don't know the story, the king, because his wife cheated him, he started marrying virgins and killing them in the morning. And Shahrayar was her, sorry, Shahrazad was her turn, but she managed to tell him story and finish at certain point. Then he kept, saved her life because he wanted to hear the story. Because it was so, 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 the story was so exciting and he had to save her life. By doing this, Shahrazad saved the lives of so many girls, that crazy king. And if you are interested, go and look for the book, The Arabian Nights, or The One Thousand Nights, which was a bestseller in Europe in the 18th century. Do you know this man? If you don't tell you, he is John F. Kennedy, the American president who was assassinated in, do you know, 1965. If you don't know, if you don't know there is a gap in your history.
knowledge i mean but i'll like to share you some wisdom he said he said geography has made us neighbors economics has made us what partners and necessity has made us united but history has made us what guess what he said he said made us friends isn't that wisdom i'd like to add this history made us interdependence nations depend on each other but history clarifies misperceptions misconceptions of kar khatia it removes stereotypes it produces more respect and we get better relations with everybody else do you know the father of history herodotus i refer to him sometimes so be familiar if you do not be familiar with this name he was a greek philosopher who lived in 484 bc before christ what he said about history he said the purpose is to prevent the traces of human events from being erased by time and to preserve the fame and to preserve the fame and to preserve the fame and important and remarkable achievements produced by the Greeks and non Greeks. Isn't that interesting? But I'd like to share with you something he said. He said, In peace, sons bury their fathers. In war, fathers bury their sons. Isn't that wise? Ah, another historian, another storyteller, it's Ibn Battuta. Have you been to the mall, beautiful mall in Dubai that carries his name? He was a great traveler. Now, to me, Ibn Battuta had a fascinating story. He was the world's first tourist. He traveled for, he traveled, he lived 700 years ago. He traveled for 30 years, covered 121,000 kilometers in 30 years. He visited, lived, worked in 44 countries. His transportation at the time was either a donkey, a camel, he had to walk. There were no planes, trains, or cars, there was nothing. And he recorded all his sightings in a book called the Rihla, The Journey, it's worth reading. So my students, after listening to my stories, of taking, after taking my history course, they began to organize more better journeys for themselves, better holidays, and they visited places like Petra, Mesopotamia, Iraq. So, stories will help you plan your life better. Even my students, they were injected with PMA, positive mental attitude, more enthusiasm, more energy, they had fun, they had knowledge, and they transformed their knowledge into excellent presentations, which we enjoyed, and useful projects. So, and the great wisdom that I like to share with you, Santiana, the Spanish, Santiana, the Spanish philosopher said, those who cannot remember the past, repeat it for sure. And here is the proof. Let's look at these three leaders, three dictators, Napoleon, do you know them? Hitler, you know him? Do you know Saddam? These three dictators, they just repeated each other's mistake because they didn't bother to read history or they didn't want to learn from history. And the great leader and the founding father of the United Arab Emirates, one of the happiest nations on earth, Sheikh Zayed has said, just like the philosopher, whoever has no past has neither present nor future. So what stories am I going to tell you in the coming episode? I'm going to tell you stories, not fiction, real stories, but interesting about the Middle East, there are people, the story, the rise of Islam, Andalusia, a long story, very interesting, the golden age of Muslims, Christendom and Islam, history of languages, uh, modern history, the Middle East in World War One and Two, UAE and the Gulf history, Gulf War and so on. I want to tell you something. My stories will provide you with knowledge and factual data. I compare them to an application that you download in your brain and you store this application in your long-term and short-term memory. When you store this application, like an application you store in your computer, this results in you becoming a critical thinker, a problem solver. Because believe me, if you say, I'm a critical thinker, you are not, unless you have enough data to judge and to be able to solve problems. Finally, finally, this is the beginning of this evocative journey around the Middle East. Now I suggest you go to, to YouTube and click on the story of the Middle East or Dr. Asub Sharif or any keywords. There are five episodes of ancient history. 
Episode 1 will be about what is the Middle East and it's important, a short episode to just to orientate you on what the Middle East and where it got this name. And finally, finally, the proverb says 1000 miles trip begins with one step. So join me. Let's take the first step together and go to episode one. Have fun. Bye bye.